Thank you for joining the University of Michigan Medical School Faculty Education Series, brought to you by the Grant Services and Analysis Office in the Office of Research. This video will provide information on how to write a compelling aim section for your grant proposal. It is well known that there are many challenges to grant writing. First and foremost, you must have excellent ideas. Secondly, you must be able to communicate them clearly to a diverse group of reviewers. Ultimately, if the reviewers cannot follow your amazing science, your grant will not get an excellent score. The AIMS page, especially the AIMS themselves, are the crux of your application. This page serves as a concept sheet with project milestones, hypotheses, and the most important elements of the approach. It is an overview of everything important and novel about your proposal at a conceptual, not detailed level. Here you must quickly gain the reviewer's trust and confidence while simultaneously convincing them that your work is important to fund. An effective AIMS page makes the case that the research is important, the methods are likely to be successful, and the applicant is the right person and team to do the project. Most likely, Many of the unassigned reviewers will not have read your entire plan. This page is the most likely part they will read to determine the extent to which they agree with what the assigned reviewers say. The flow of logic must be compelling, such that reviewers can follow your plan while listening to others discussing it at the same time. Before you begin writing your specific aims, there are several points to consider. Refine your ideas. What is the importance of your problem? What are you trying to do? Here you should define your niche. Generate ideas pertinent to your research. Collect and assess background information. Also, obtain feedback. Seek constructive criticism from colleagues or friends. Finally, assess feasibility. Make sure you can complete your aims within the time frame of the award. For an R01, that's typically four to five years. Your aims page should be clear. Start by telling them what you're going to tell them. This is your opener, where you lay out why your proposal is important. This message should be predicated on two things, what you want to say and what the funding agency needs to hear. Ultimately, you are there to provide direction. Tell them again, this section is open-ended. Here you explain the details. Your message should ring with logic. That is, you need to emphasize the benefits of your points. Put reviewers in a position to feel why what you're saying is important and how things will be better when they follow through with your ideas. Tell them what you just told them. Reiterate your salient points. This is the opportunity to give reviewers a reason to believe in your idea and in you. Once again, demonstrate how you and your team are the ones to deliver on the message. It is recommended that you start with a bulleted outline. Here you can write out brief bullets to better see how each component relates to each other, as well as to determine the extent by which the logic and concepts of your aims flow linearly. Here are some of the essential elements of the aims. The overarching goal. What is the problem or issue that needs to be addressed? The theory, rationale, and motivation, or essentially the why. Your approach. What is the applicant's approach or method? You may not need to go into detail. You can just consider if it's behavioral, genetic, or otherwise. Your specific questions or hypotheses. Your aims. Each should test a specific part or aspect of your working hypothesis. And finally, the significance and innovation. Why is this important? How will this advance and impact biomedical sciences? How is this innovative? How is this unique? Next, you will expand your bullets into sentences forming the draft of your specific aims. The first paragraph for your introduction. In one to two sentences, you will start with the hook. Here you will define the big picture or the central challenge of your field. You will define what the research problem is and why it's important for you to conduct this research. Please note, make sure to explain specialized terminology to maintain reviewers' goodwill. Next is the known. In two to five sentences, you will write what is known about the problem and what has been done to solve it. Here you will educate and inform the reviewer about what is currently known about the specific subject you are discussing. 
For this, you need to collect and critically review the literature going from the oldest to the most recent facts and studies. Next is the gap. In one to two sentences, discuss the gap which needs to be filled. For instance, what we still need to learn or accomplish in order to achieve the big picture you addressed in the first sentence. This is one of the most important parts of the paragraph. Here you will provide the whole proposal and identify the piece of knowledge needed to advance the field vertically. Some suggested ways to start this sentence is with a phrase like, what is not known or there is a clear lack of. Finally, in one to three sentences, you will write out the critical need. Why does this gap exist? Why is it a significant problem? Consequences of not meeting the need should be conveyed here. At the end of this paragraph, the reviewer should be convinced there is a gap or a lack in knowledge that is impeding the progress in the field. Let's go over an example of the first paragraph of your aims, which can be found at the link listed below. Please note each section of this paragraph is highlighted to list the components of the introduction stated previously. You can see the start of the paragraph begins with the hook, as well as the current information. Next, the gap is listed, finally followed by the need to address the gap to advance the field. The goal of the second paragraph is to provide the solution to fill the gap of knowledge. Here you will go from the broadest to narrowest focus of your plan. You will state the what, why, and who. Beginning in the first sentence, you will list your goals. What is the long-term goal or big picture you will be pursuing over multiple periods of grant support? Next, in two to four sentences, you will state the main objectives and central hypotheses. What is the purpose of your grant? Describe how your project addresses the critical need you originally talked about. Also, explain how you arrived at your central hypothesis. Here, your preliminary data will be the basis for the hypothesis. Published works which support the hypothesis and are complementary to your own preliminary data should be addressed here as well. In general, it is best to avoid vague hypotheses. It will be unclear to the reviewers what you expect to determine with the proposed research. Next, in one to three sentences, list your rationale. Why do you want to do this research? Briefly, state what your project's completion would make possible, for example, new therapeutics, and tie it to the funding entity's mission. You will discuss how this project will give you the means to take the next vertical step in the field. Finally, in one to two sentences, you will describe the who, your qualifications, specifically what makes your group and this environment uniquely suited to obtain your objective. You can mention factors such as your preliminary data, personnel qualifications, lab equipment, etc. Keep it concise. At the end of the paragraph, the reviewer should understand that the results of your project will meet the need you stated in the first paragraph. Thinking of the terminology we stated in the slide previously, let's go over an example of a second paragraph. Again, you can find it at the link listed below. Here you can see there is a long-term goal and proposal objective first stated in the paragraph. After that, you will find other terms that we discussed, including the rationale and hypotheses, followed by the expected outcome or payoff. Before we discuss the layout of the third paragraph, we should discuss the objective of the aims. Review your aims. The purpose is to tell reviewers how you will test parts of the central hypothesis or discuss what tasks you need to do to obtain the objective. You should have two to four aims. These aims should link to a part of your central hypothesis, flow logically, be related but not dependent, be brief, informative, and convey the rationale behind the approach, and be global and open-ended to allow for alternative strategies. In the third paragraph, your aims, you will start with the title. In bold type, list what you want to do. Write a brief active headline that links back to the central hypothesis. You can use one sentence for your central hypothesis. Essentially, how do you think things work in reference to this aim? 
In one to two sentences, discuss your approach. How will you test this hypothesis? The method. In one sentence, discuss the expected outcomes. What are the anticipated results from this test which will confirm your hypothesis? Let's go over an example of the third paragraph. Here you can see the title, followed by the experimental strategy, and finally the outcome or impact. Please note, you can again find this example at the website listed below. The final paragraph, your conclusion. Here you should inform reviewers of the payoff or what they can expect for a return if your application were to be funded. In one to three sentences, state the innovation. What would completion of this proposal bring to the field that is not present currently? Your expected outcomes. What do you expect to see at the completion of each aim? The impact. How will your proposal benefit the people or other subjects you mentioned in the opening paragraph? Your hook. Listed here is an example of the final paragraph. You can see the innovation, expected outcomes, and the payoff is listed. To wrap up, let us go over your specific aims checklist. Have you stated what is known and what is the problem? Do you have a clear goal of your planned research? Are your specific questions and issues addressed? Is your approach referenced in appropriate detail? Have you stated what will be known at the end of the research and why it's important? And is this clearly understood? Also make sure that your innovation and uniqueness is clear. Thank you for joining the University of Michigan Medical School Office of Research Faculty Education Series on writing your NIH specific aims. For additional tools and resources, please check our website under the Training and Resources section or by reaching out through email at msgrants at umich.edu.